My name is Virginia and I'm here to tell you today that your cat may have diabetes and you may not even know it. My own cat had been showing symptoms for months, but because I was unfamiliar with what to look for, he went undiagnosed until his excessive thirst and peeing started becoming noticeable. Today I'll be discussing how you and your pet can survive feline diabetes. I'll explain the symptoms, discuss the dietary changes that are recommended, and even tell you how you can mitigate the costs of caring for a diabetic cat. So this all started back in December when I noticed that my cat was focusing on the water dish. He stayed near it and would not leave it. And I couldn't figure out what was going on. So I started to do some research. I ran across a 2018 web article on feline diabetes by, the, by Cornell University's College of Veterinary and Medicine. It points out that some of the key symptoms of feline diabetes are weight loss, excessive thirst, and excessive urination. So I started to think back to a few months beforehand, and I had noticed a few months before that that my cat was skinnier. I couldn't figure out why he was losing weight, but he was losing weight. So I figured, okay, well, I'll change up his diet. Maybe he's just not liking his food as much as he used to. I changed up his diet, started feeding him a little bit more tuna. He started gaining a little bit more weight back and no other symptoms were apparent, so I let it go. Now, fast forward a couple of months and now he's focusing on his, on his water dish. I knew something was up. But not all cats lose weight. As a matter of fact, many morbidly obese cats become diabetic because they're morbidly obese and getting them to lose weight actually ends up taking away their diabetes strange. Now, the excessive thirst and urination was really a big problem. He stayed focused on the water dish. I tried to pull him away, tried to distract him. That wasn't helping. He wanted that water like he was constantly thirsty. And then he'd run straight over to the cat box and fill it up. It got so bad that I was having to clean out a full cat box multiple times a day. On top of that, because his cat box was full, he'd start peeing on the floor. So it's, it's a major problem. So, you know, and I ended up w seeing him walk around wobbling a little bit. And, you know, at this point I'm going, all right, you're making a mess all over my house. You're not acting right. You're drinking like crazy. So maybe I better take you to the vet. I took him to the vet and the vet did a blood glucose curve on him to try to see where his sugars were at. And notice his sugars were through the roof. The vet recommended insulin shots and to change him to a low carbohydrate diet. So not knowing exactly what a low carbohydrate diet was, I went online to try to figure out why he would be put on a low carbohydrate diet. And I ran across a 2015 paper called an update on insulin treatment for dogs and cats, insulin dosing pens and more. Fleeman, Thompson, and Lanthan pointed out that a study by Romp and Ram showed a 64% remission rate for cats on a low-carbohydrate diet when prescribed Glargine insulin. Now, my cat's not on Glargine insulin. What he's on is Protamine Zinc insulin. So I decided in order to try to get him to have a better chance of remission, which I'm not sure if it will ever happen, but I really did want to help him become more comfortable and maybe lose some more of these symptoms. I was going to have to figure out how to calculate the carbs in his food. Now on the back of every can of wet food at the very top, you'll see a line that says guaranteed analysis. And there's all these percentage rates, crude protein, crude fat, crude fiber, moisture, taurine, all of these have a percentage rate beside them. If you add up all the percentage rates, you're going to find out that it doesn't all add up to 100%. That leftover invisible number, that's your carbs. Now, a lot of the, the cat food, the dry cat food that you'll feed them, that you normally feed cats, has a lot of carbs in it. So I ended up doing a lot of shopping around, looking on, um, looking on Walmart, looking at Food Lion, looking at... Um, at the, the pet store in town trying to find the best place to find wet cat food that was a low-carb wet cat food. 
I added up all the percentage rates on multiple cat foods, and I came across Frisky's Extra Gravy Pate. Now this particular brand, the Extra Gravy Pate, not the Extra Gravy Chunky, that one has more carbs. This particular brand has a 99.5% accounted for in its analysis, which leads to a 0.5% that's not accounted for. That's the carbs. Now out of all the other cans of wet cat food, this particular brand was much lower. So I started feeding that to my cat. Once I did that, I noticed that his, his blood sugar dropped at least 100 points. Now, mind you, the vet had said that his blood sugar was up in the 500s, and it's supposed to be below 300, so dropping 100 points is a big deal. The insulin shots helped get him the rest of the way. Now, when the vet gives you insulin shots, that's the, the first thing you're going you're gonna to think is, is my cat going to let me do this? So what we started doing is I'd open up the can in the morning, dump it into a dish, and I would only feed him now twice a day. I used to be, I used to feed, leave his food out all the time. You know, just keep it filled up and he'd eat whenever he wanted to. Now he only gets food in the morning and in the evening. While he's eating, I pick up some of his hair like you're picking, up, picking him up by the scruff of his neck. And then I take the needle and I jab it right into the scruff, scruff of the neck real fast. He doesn't even seem to notice it, which is really strange. And I just push the insulin in and let him go and he's done. And he'll sit there and eat right away. He doesn't even squirm. So that was rather helpful. I can give him his, his insulin at the, at, during each and every meal, give it to him twice a day. His blood sugars stay fine. Now, the vet may ask you occasionally. Oh, sorry, my camera went a little skewy. The vet may ask you occasionally to do a blood glucose curve just to make sure that you're not giving him too much insulin or too little insulin. Now you can take him into the vet to have the vet do the blood glucose curve, but a lot of the times that's going to be very expensive. The other way you can do it is by doing it at home with a regular blood glucose meter that you can get from every CVS pharmacy or any Walmart. You get your little finger stick tool you draw it back, this draws back, and then you press the button on the very edge of his ear. So put a washcloth behind his ear, lay the, the finger stick tool on the front of his ear on the very edge, pull it back and press the button and get just a little bit of drop of blood and enter it into your meter. You do that every hour on the hour and give all those numbers that you get to your vet and your vet will use that information to tell you whether or not you need to increase his insulin dose or back down off of his insulin dose because if you give him too much he ends up in hypoglycemia which is a whole nother problem. Now all of this can be rather expensive. You've got your wet cat food you've now had to switch the cat to You've got your insulin that you have to buy. You have to buy all these needles. You have to buy a bucket to, to keep the used needles in so they don't end up poking somebody in the trash can. It's a mess. Now, the, your biggest cost is going to be your, your um, insulin, of course. Now, when trying to find information on the average cost of insulin, I came across Allen & Works 2013 article on the best ways to save on cat insulin on Pet Care of RX of all places. It gave me a range of $30 to $150. Now, mind you, this little bottle of insulin is about $125. That's a lot of money. It lasts for a month or two, uh, possibly about two months, but still, that's still a lot of money and not everybody has that. So I was trying to find out from some of my friends who have animals if they've ever come across this problem and one of my friends actually has a diabetic cat what she did was ha ask her vet to write a prescription for her insulin for the cat and she took it to Walmart of all places and told them that she wanted to know what the cheapest insulin was that she could get Walmart gave her a pr gave her insulin that was 30 bucks 30 bucks I mean 
cost savings right there when this bottle is $125. So the next thing you're going to want to do is shop around for your food. Like I said before, compare various different stores to try to figure out which place is going to give you the food the cheapest. Now you can get prescription diabetic cat food. You can either buy that from your vet or from Chewy.com. Now for a 12-day supply of prescription diabetic cat food, it's $50 on Chewy.com. This can of cat food, the Friskies Extra Gravy Pate, is $14 for 12 days on Chewy.com. I mean, that's a great deal of, of um, cost savings right there. Remember to check your, your, your local stores to compare, though, because you also got to count in for shipping for Chewy.com. So if you can get your food locally, it's going to be a lot easier on your pocket. Now, your excessive urination with a diabetic, a diabetic cat can still be a problem, even with the shots, even with the food they're still gonna drink a lot more and use the bathroom a lot more than normal. So I ended up switching my cat to Exquisite Cat Naturals Pine Pellet Litter. It looks like this, little pellets. This stuff is more absorbent and it's also much cheaper than the clay cat litter, the normal cat litter that you would buy. Now, my hope is that with these tips, your cat can live comfortably with diabetes, and so can you. Remember to keep an eye out for the excessive weight loss, the excessive thirst, and the excessive peeing. By excessive weight loss, I mean, you know, if your cat loses more than a few pounds in a month, there might be something to look into. Remember to check with your vet to get that prescription that you can take anywhere else you want to try to see if you can shop around for the cheapest insulin. And be sure to change your, your cat's diet to a low carbohydrate diet. Hopefully these tips will decrease your anxiety as well as um, your cat's symptoms so both you and him can learn to live with this disease. Our pets look to us to take care of them and hopefully this information can help you help your pet. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this speech.